Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we got to do better than this. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's fine. And I uh, want to welcome you this morning and want to welcome those of you who are joining us on YouTube. We appreciate your being with us. Hit the like and share button and share our service with others. For those of you here this morning, we would like to have a uh, record of your presence. If you would take the uh, uh, attendance pads and sign those and pass them. We appreciate it uh, very much. This is a very special day, Palm Sunday. Following the service today, we will have palm branches for all of the uh, children and youth and young at heart who would like to have a palm branch to take it home. So they'll be up uh, on display here on our chancel following our service. Kay, do you have an announcement this morning? Always. Okay. came out and helped. If you were there and helped us, would you raise your hand? It just took a whole village and there were probably 40 members from this church that stopped in and helped. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Sherry, you want to say a word about uh, upcoming Easter? Uh, this is uh, Holy Week, we'll be having a, a brief service of Holy Communion here in the sanctuary on Thursday at 7 o'clock. And during that time, we will take an offering. Uh, all of the offering of the Monday, Thursday service will go to our Help Change the World offering. Some of these jars have really filled up. They're, they're almost to the full, but we've got others that, that have a way to go. And especially as we go through this Holy Week, uh, Sunday will be the last day of this special Lenten offering. But uh, if you want to put in more than change, folding money or a check, you're welcome to do so. And we have uh, the sheets indicating the different missions that these monies go to uh, for this special offering. So please be generous. All this goes to a great cause and we participate your support. So uh, Sherry, tell us about Easter egg hunts and the like. And the like. Okay, today we've got our Palm Sunday kits that get to go home with all of the families. Um, it's not only got ice cream sundaes, because Palm Sunday, you, you also, and there's a Holy Week devotional where you can talk about the, the Holy Week, everything that happened in Jesus' life all the way up to the cross and all the way up to his resurrection. On Tuesday night, we're having a special work night. And from four to seven here to help prep for not only our Allen Bowden Easter egg hunt, but also for all of our activities that are gonna be on going here at the campus on Easter weekend. Um, Thursday morning, if you can meet us at Allen Bowden at 1130 in the morning, we will meet together, we will pray, we'll get um, briefed by the school on exactly where we need to place the eggs and that sort of thing. Um, Y'all just, even if you can't join us, please pray for this opportunity. It is a phenomenal opportunity to be on school grounds during school hours. Um, just, you know, just loving on these kids. This is a phenomenal opportunity and I'm, I'm so grateful for this. It's 125 kids that we'll be serving. And so, you know, I told Ann Cornelius two words, captive audience. So we get a chance to just love on them. And so just be praying for that opportunity. Um, on Thursday night, after Monday Thursday, if you hang around in the parking lot a little bit, you'll be able to see our eggs, our egg display this year. It's going to glow in the dark. It's going to be really awesome because as a church, we want to shine God's light in our world, G-L-O-W. So our eggs will glow in the dark. We're going to have a peep stop on Saturday. If you want to bring your kids, neighbors, grandkids through the, through the church drive from 11 to 1, I'll be passing out candy and treats down there. And then on Sunday morning, next Sunday morning at 9.45, we'll be in the Family Life Center for our Easter extravaganza, where we talk about the great exchange, where Jesus changed, he exchanged our emptiness for his fullness in life. So I hope you can join us. Um, please spread the word with your families and neighbors. If you're interested in volunteering, just please contact me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm not aware of any other Announcements, Cabe, do you have any announcements or going to be leading us in our call to worship? You didn't tell how uh, the how, uh, 
about our participants in the run yesterday and how they did. Good. What a wonderful project. Invite the congregation to stand, and uh, Kay will lead us in our call to worship. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This aisle so they can read it. standing for our prayer of confession and praise. Almighty God, you, you sent, sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace be with you. Would you extend a greeting of peace and welcome one to the other? Okay, we'll invite everyone to be seated and uh, the praise team will lead us in a song of praise.
really appreciate leading us in worship and praise this morning. Would you join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts for the reading of God's Word? Lord, open our hearts and minds this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit that as scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're able, uh, please stand as Cabe comes to read a passage from Matthew 21. One verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything, anything to you, say, to the, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to, the, to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went, went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on, on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Choir, thank you so much. It's good to have our choir back with us this Sunday. And Jim, glad you're feeling better and back with us. Lots and lots of illness and stuff going around. Well, we're continuing in our look at a life of transformation. Uh, we talked about it in Sunday school today in the class I attended Faith Links about how we're doing with our Lenten journey. And maybe that's a question for all of us, how are we doing? Are changes taking place in our life? Are, are we allowing God to bring us through some changes and to do a work within us through this Lenten journey? We've, we've looked in the past and we've seen it's, pa- it's partly a, a result of My battery go dead? Am I on? Okay. Uh, partly practicing spiritual disciplines in our life, partly a lifestyle of growth. Sometimes change comes in our life as we are serving and striving to help change our world. But I would suggest to you this morning that part of the change that takes place in our life is just a simple result of our walking day by day with Christ, walking through life with Christ. When we come to this day, which is known as Palm Sunday, it's also known as Passion Sunday, and we enter into this uh, week, there are so many passages, so many events, so many episodes that take place in this one week. It's hard to bring them all in. It's hard to make sense of it all. But it shows you of the variety of experiences and the variety of challenges that Christ had in his life. Christ's life was sometimes a little bit like a roller coaster. There were high peaks like on the the day of triumph and valleys when people were denying him and betraying him and turning against him. His life was filled with a variety of experiences, as is ours. But I think these events of Holy Week are just simply a reminder for us that whether we're at a high moment in life or a low moment of life or being cast down or being brought up, every day of our life is a day to simply walk with Christ, to be with Him and allow Him to do in us the work He wants to do as we go through all of the variety of experiences and emotions and triumphs and trial of daily living. I want to look at this week just briefly. As we reflect on our own life, we look at this passage in Matthew 21, 1 to 11, the triumph and entry, and we know that life does have its time of triumphs. It does have its time of praise. As the children came in and Christ came in and Everyone was excited and waving palm branches and proclaiming Christ as Lord and praising his name. And there are times in our life when rightly so, we should have our hearts filled with praise and give thanks to God. I saw a person post uh, the other day on a social media, just a simple sign that said, six months sober. Now, six months doesn't sound like a whole lot of time, but for them it was... Uh, an eternity. It was a tremendous step in their life. And they were celebrating and giving thanks to God that for six months now they had been free from an addiction that had plagued them. And they said, we were able to do this through the power of God. There are times in our life when when we can just see God's hand at work in our life. Uh, last night, Friday night, Saturday night, <coughs> Uh, my classmates from uh, the Hale class of 1970 celebrated. It was our 50th anniversary two years late, so it was really our 52nd anniversary. And I heard a lot of people saying, you know, we, were fi- we didn't know if we were ever going to really get to have a reunion again. It got postponed twice due to COVID. And uh, it was amazing over the two years that we postponed it, how many of our classmates we lost. I mean, it was staggering over these last two years. Of course, we're at that age group, and some of that just happens anyway. But people were gathered last night, and and so many of them were talking about they were thankful and giving praise, not only that we could see each other once again and be together, but just that God had brought them through some of the challenges that have faced our nation and our world and the health concerns over these last couple of years. We were just... Many of us thankful to be alive, but praising God that we could be together. I thought of it in terms of, you know, one of the greatest praises we're going to have 
there's going to be a great reunion one day when Christ returns and we're together with all of our loved ones whom we haven't seen for years. And what a day of triumph that will be. But in those moments of victory, in those moments of celebration, we need to pause and walk with Christ and realize that that we walk day by day by the grace of God. He is the one who enables us and brings us and sustains us and opens doors of opportunity for us. And we, we need to walk with Christ, not forget him, not neglect him, not turn from him, but praise him in the triumph, joyful times of life. Well, then we go on in this Passion Week. If we look at chapter 21, there's a whole sequence of events that really bring turmoil to the life of Christ. He goes into the temple and he has this famous exchange where he chases the money changers out of the temple. And there are times in our life and we have turmoil in our life due to some things that need to be chased out. He goes on and and has this discourse about a a fig tree that's not producing fruit and, and at times how difficult it is to have faith and trust and to put our trust in him. Goes on and, and talks about his own authority and those who rejected his claims to authority and how necessary it is for us to accept God's word and his authority in our life. And in all these things, we, we know that there are times in our life when our life is just kind of a mess, when there's turmoil in our life. Received a phone call from a, someone in a totally uh, different community. Uh, part of my uh, cell phone is still a 405 area code, so I get phone calls sometimes from 405 thinking I'm living over there doing services or providing ministries. And family called me uh, from Oklahoma City the other day, and they said, our son and his family have had such strife, such turmoil. They have an 18-year-old son, our grandson, who's caused such turmoil in the home that they've asked him to leave. We thought we could help the young man. We brought him into our home, and now he's caused such turmoil into our home. We don't know what to do. We we need someone to help us, and I was able to give them some names of some people in the Oklahoma City area that might be able to help them, but life's kind of like that at times, doesn't it? Turmoil just kind of brews itself up. It may not be a relational turmoil. It may be a matter of health or or, or some other, but, but difficulties come, and there are times in our life when there are some things we do need to cast out, even as Jesus cast out the money changers from the temple. And that was one of the questions April asked today during Lent, have you given up anything for Lent? And for many of us there are things that maybe as a part of our journey we need to give up in our own life. And, and maybe it's habits that don't serve us well. Maybe it's attitudes uh, that we've been holding on to that we need to let go of. Maybe it's lack of discipline and there are certain things we need to add. But all of these things, when left uncontrolled, can bring turmoil and disruption in our life. And there are times in our life when we simply need to walk with Christ and say, I need to make this change. I need to move in this new direction. I need to find freedom in this area of my life, and just to know that Christ can transform us as we offer unto him the confusing times of life, the the turmoil times of life, the upsetting times of life, things we need to let go of and things we need to take hold of. And then at times there's just tragedy. And especially when we get to chapter 26 of, of, of Matthew, this whole scene of this Passion Week changes uh, to just one of of outright tragedy as, as we find Christ arrested. It says, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to see Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him, and the betrayal was on. And that was followed by a time of questioning by the high priest, Caiaphas. It was followed by Peter's denial, and this wasn't one who was betraying him. This was just a man who, just days before, would say, Even if everybody else falls away, Lord, I'm going to be with you. And 
Jesus said, the reality is, uh, you're going to betray me too. You're going to deny me too. And in a moment of fear and cowardice, Peter denied. Now, I don't know the man. I don't know who he is. I've not been with the man. Why are you saying that about me, this one who had made such bold claims? Are there times in our life when those who we think are going to be faithful to us turn from us? The mockery of a trial before Pilate, and then finally the arrest and crucifixion. And all it seems turns into a life tragedy as this one who so many proclaimed to be the Messiah. It seemed like it was all coming to an end, and their hopes and dreams were going to be dashed, and Jesus was being crucified, and everything around them was falling apart. It just seemed to happen so quickly. We had our men's group last Thursday. Uh, as we were preparing for our meal, uh, one of the men came in and said, Oh my gosh, I just arrived. We've got a man down out in the parking lot. And we didn't know what that was all about. Went out. One of our Methodist men, Jim Stockard, had fallen. And fortunately, he didn't up his cheek pretty bad. He was pretty roughed up. Fortunately, Jim Bush had arrived a little bit late and found him in the parking lot. Otherwise, we might have had uh, Mr. Stockard down through the whole meal before anyone discovered him. But I talked to Jim yesterday, and he said he was doing fine. Says, it looked like I've been in a bar fight, but I'm doing okay. He didn't break to his eyes black and, and that type of thing. But isn't it amazing how quickly tragedy can come upon us? Isn't it amazing how we can be just enjoying life, and then something happens that just upsets the apple cart, and all of a sudden now we've got a major challenge in our life. We've got a major issue in our life coming on. And life's just kind of like that. And yet to the degree that we as Christians can just take one day at a time, one step at a time, one event, one incident at a time, in the presence of Christ and walk with Jesus into those moments of great joy and give thanks and, and lift up our praise and thanksgiving to God for what he has done. And if there's confusion or doubt or turmoil, just offering those to God and just walking with him through the turmoil of life. And, and then in those moments of true tragedy, when somehow it just seems like life, we've, we've fallen down and we don't know if we can get back up and we just need of the presence of Christ to walk through us through these times that are so uh, traumatic in our life. But then finally, we come to this element of trust. And we know that, that walking with Christ in many ways is just walking in the promises of God. It's just walking faithfully, trusting in the promises of God. Listen to some of these promises that emerged during this period of passion. Matthew 26, 32, after I am raised, I will go before you. He is going to go before us. He is not only <clears throat> our alpha, he's our omega. He's the beginning, he is also our end. He is the one that is leading us from stage to stage through every journey in life. John 14, 2, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, what I have told you, that I go to prepare a place for you, and how meaningful that is <clears throat> to some of our own members who over these Last weeks, last months, last few years of lost loved ones. How meaningful it is uh, to come to a reunion and find 151 of your friends have, have gone on to meet the Lord. But to know that God is preparing a place for us. There's going to be a reunion that we cannot even imagine. God is preparing a place for those who go before us. John 14, 27, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Hard words to apply. If we have children who are in deep trouble, if we have family, friends, and relatives who are finding turmoil in their life, and yet Christ is promising that he comes to give us a peace that the world could never give. John 14, 15, if you love me and keep my commandments, I will pray the Father and give you another counselor to be with you forever and that we can trust God, that through the power of his Holy Spirit, he will be with us and empower us through every stage of life. John 15, 4, I speak these things that, your jo that my joy may be in you 
and that your joy may be full. And that no matter what life brings our way, God's joy can be in us. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. God hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. John 16, 13. When the Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. And we have the presence of the Holy Spirit now to guide us. And all of these Great promises, and I could go on and on and on, were given in the midst of turmoil and tragedy of what we know as Holy Week or the Passion Week. Every single one of them came out of the context of the disciples' world being turned upside down and Jesus' life being challenged and threatened and, and finally crucified. Every single one of these promises comes out of a context of life difficulty when it is hard to walk with him and yet the opportunity to trust him is always there and maybe the question for us during Lent at least at this stage of Lent is not so much how are we doing and giving up the things we need to give up how are we doing it at building into our life the things we need to add but is there a Holy Week promise that speaks to us uh, maybe it's his promise of guidance. Maybe it's his promise of joy. Maybe it's the promise of peace. Maybe it's the promise of presence. Is there a Holy Week promise that we need to hold on to as we go into this Holy Week? Life indeed does have its ups and downs. It has its triumphs and its tragedies. It has its celebrations and also its sorrows. Some of this we will see if we're reading the story of the Passion through this Holy Week. But one message is clear and resounds uh, again and again. Christ is with us to the end. He is with us through it all. He is closer to us than we will ever know. And the challenge for us, if we really want to see transformation and change in our life, is just to walk with him day by day. Uh, to celebrate the joys life brings and, and to find strength and comfort for the challenges life brings, but to know through it all he will be with us to the end. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to our joy this morning, one of the great joys is always to receive uh, new families into the life of the church. I would like to invite uh, Kevin and Cindy and Emily Swift to come forward and, and others who may want to come. This is going to be interesting. I'll see if I can hold this and read at the same time. We're delighted to have uh, Kevin.
Kevin and Cindy and Emily come and join us this morning. They're coming uh, to unite with us through the transfer of their membership uh, from a church of another denomination. Uh, Emily is coming this morning also. She has made a profession of faith but has never been baptized, so we're going to do that as well this morning. And uh, let me just have a prayer over this water. Dear God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And I would just ask, what is Emily's full name? Emily Britton Linfoot, I baptize you in the name of Christ. May God's blessing and spirit rest upon you. And as you all come, I just simply ask you this question. Is it your desire to unite with this congregation of the United Methodist Church? And I'm going to ask the congregation if you would turn to page 38. Because as much as this family comes to join us this morning, uh, we also make a commitment to unite with them. And I would just ask you... Uh, is it your desire to be a part of this congregation, the United Methodist Church? And will you be faithful to the church and participate in the ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If that is your answer, would you say I will? And members of the household of God, I commend this swift family to your loving care. And I charge you to do all in your power to increase their faith and to confirm their hope and to perfect them in love. And what is this congregation's pledge to this family this morning? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We want to, to welcome you this morning, and we have a little devotional book. It's called The Three Simple Rules, a Wesleyan way of living, written by a bishop, deceased bishop of the church, Reuben Joe. Our church knows well, <laughs> I hope, these three simple rules, which are first, Okay, am I picking up from this one now? So, okay, I'm back live here. Uh, we have at least uh, three celebrations to the recognition of flowers this morning. Uh, some given in celebration of J.R. and Becca McCormick's anniversary by Robert McCormick. Uh, some given in celebration of Penny Woolery's birthday, given by Rick Woolery. And we have flowers given in celebration of Cheryl Cox, uh, given by Alan Cox. So great celebrations and great recognitions for all of you this morning. Are there other notes of thanksgiving or praise that you'd like to lift up before the congregation? Anyone would like to share uh, this morning? Any notes of praise or thanksgiving? Okay, well, we have a, a couple that we want to, um, Kay, you have some surgery coming up, is it Tuesday? Yes. And is this on the foot or the knee? Foot. On the foot, and which hospital? <laughs> Somewhere in Tulsa over there, there some doctor is going to be working. 
on her foot or her knee or her toe or something tomorrow. So we just or on Tuesday. Okay, we're just going to pray whatever it is. It'll all go very well and, and, and help restore your health. Again, I mentioned Mr. Stalker, who had a fall, but I did talk to him yesterday, and he scruffed up. But we're just so thankful he didn't break a, a hip or something. And uh, Gary Gloden had surgery, and I have tried three times and have not been able to get through. Does anybody have an update? Yes. How, how is he doing? Okay. Okay, but his surgery went fine and he is at home. Okay. And I'll continue to reach out to them. Do we have any other specific um, concerns or needs that we lift up? We need to continue. To, yes, April. Uh, my sister's mother dedicated to you. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, and it's April. Okay, and surgery in the morning. Okay, we will certainly keep her in our prayers. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, Jackie's uh, sister in Dallas in the hospital. And did you say, she, is she having surgery or is she just in the hospital? Okay, in the hospital with a serious situation. Let's uh, turn our hearts to the Lord. Dear God, we do thank you for this day of, of triumph and celebration. And we do know that um, there are times we just need to give thanks to you. Uh, for loved ones and the way you have mended them and healed them and families that you've brought back together and families that have joined our church and families in our fellowship that have participated in various fellowship activities and, and have just enjoyed the celebrations of life. And some of these celebrations will continue next week through family gatherings and Easter egg hunts and all of these meaningful times. Well, we know for some there is turmoil. <clears throat> we know for some there is even tragedy, hardship, and pain. And we just pray that you'd be with us. will resonate in our minds and hearts and spirits as we face these challenging times of life. Day by day, help us simply walk with you. As we go through this holy week, may this be a time especially when we draw near to you. We sense your presence near and... We look forward even now to coming to that day of great triumphant song and celebrating the resurrection and the victory you bring for each of us. Because you do this all in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers will come, and um, if you would continue with me in prayer. Dear God, we come to this point of time of just committing ourselves to you, our hearts, our lives, our wills, and yes, even our money. Help us to be faithful stewards to all you entrust to us in Christ's name. Amen.
of Jesus. And uh, after uh, our hymn, and we conclude the benediction, children, youth, and just anyone who would like, please come and... Number 277.